I'm Mara Webster with In Creative Company, and today we are joined by the wonderful John Owen Lowe, who is the co-creator, writer, actor, and executive producer of the Netflix series Unstable. And in in starting to talk a little bit about the the genesis of this show, a lot of it came from the dynamic with you and your dad, Rob Lowe, and and just kind of the humor back and forth that the two of you would have with each other, particularly through social media. Um, and I love that there was there was this kind of light bulb moment of realizing perhaps there's a, a show out of this from the really relatable elements from parental dynamics and, and all that comes with that. Um, and wanted to ask you a little bit about the, the early conversations and development, particularly when it came to working with Victor Fresco, who's also a co-creator on the series, because I've heard you say that Victor was incredibly pivotal in coming a lot, uh, coming up with a lot of the foundational elements. And I was interested in how you found the initial building blocks to then really grow into a whole series together. Yeah, it's a, it's a great um, question. We, so the, the, the very, uh, earliest stages of this were uh me posturing if there was a a show about a son who has a a father that's in the spotlight and sort of beloved by a larger community and 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 so that that son doesn't have uh many people to turn to when when he's feeling like his dad is is an insane person um because nobody wants to agree with him on that uh and that coupled with the reception that me uh, giving my dad a hard time online was getting sort of inspired me to take that to my my agent and my manager. And we were talking about it. And then I was like, oh, maybe there is a show there. And I brought it to Rob to see if he would be a, a willing participant. And he is a good sport. And then um, I drafted up sort of a, a rough outline of what that show could have been. Um, and then we obviously liked it but we were but we, we sort of came to terms with the fact that we needed somebody to, to helm this who's who has the um experience as a showrunner and, and a creator and and we found victor fresco who is the best so lovely to work with and so talented and so so funny and um he took what i had sketched out as a foundation and and really changed a lot, but, but, but built the entire sort of world, uh, with us and, and, um, gave us that, that fresco edge that you'll see, you know, you see in Santa Clarita diet and better off Ted. That's so funny and, and smart and fast. And, um, the three of us then, you know, worked as a, as a pretty, you know, cohesive unit for months on the pilot and, and reworking the pilot and then got a writer's room together and got some really funny people. And, and that's how the show was born. And in shaping the show as well with, with Jackson as the central character to this, who you're playing so much of it is, is someone who really just wants to be kind of seen in their own light. And when you look at all of the other characters, in essence, you can look at every single one of them and they're all looking for that in different ways. You know, you have Anna who's writing fan fiction about being admired and being appreciated in the workplace. You know, you have the, the, the two women in the science lab who want people to notice and appreciate the work that they're doing. And so as you were all crafting out this central parental dynamic, how did that then transcend onto the other characters and finding the way that there's a lot of linearity between the journey that every character is going on, but they're each on their own very unique paths of it. Yeah, they're all, it's, yeah, it's a great point. They're all, <clears throat> they, every character has their own arc that does in some ways mirror the, the Jackson Ellis uh, dynamic or, or their theme and either mirrors it or highlights it or contrasts it in a way that we think complements um, each episode. And, and one thing we sought out with this show, and I think we did a nice job of it, if I can pat myself on the back, it is, um, you know, there's some, some comedies on TV where when you take a break from sort of the central characters or the funniest characters, there's just kind of a lull because you go to these other people and, and they're, kind of like story driven, you know, pipey plot drivey stuff. And, and, uh, you know, I think every character on our show makes me laugh truly that, like we wanted to make sure <clears throat> that everybody, you know, Ruby and Luna in the lab, Malcolm running around, Anna's so good. Um, you know, the side characters are killers, Juan, the twins, and then my personal favorite, Leslie, um, anytime we take space from Jackson and Ellis, I think it, it, it highlights the show rather than takes away from, from what it was built around. 
I also think with the interpersonal dynamics with all the characters as well, there's there's obviously always such a great conversation and dialogue that you're able to create through the lens of comedy. And, you know, going going back to this parental dynamic, there's so many things that they're saying to each other and expressing to each other that if it wasn't through their form of shared humor would feel very much like it was in a place of conflict. But it always feels like even when they're calling each other out on things that it does still always come from a place of love. And, you know, Jackson didn't run away because he hates his dad. He he broke away because he needed to find his own space and his own identity. Um, and so in, in terms of finding a lot of the comedic beats, how did that really lead a lot of the comedic writing and, and shaping the dynamic between characters in that way? Well, I think that that's, you know, <clears throat> the most interesting form of comedy to me is comedy that rises from conflict. Uh, and uh, we wanted stakes in our show, but, <clears throat> you know, we didn't want to make it there's so many comedies that occupy the television space right now that are completely stakes oriented. The darker comedies, the berries, the, the succession, um, uh, you know, even shows like Dave, things like these that are having moments that they're comedies, but there's not a lot of laughs. And what we tried to do was, was still work with conflict but make it more interpersonal and make it somewhat smaller stakes which is more relatable to everyday life where it's like you know i show up if you know you show up late to work and a coworker gives you like the stink eye and you're like i hate that person like it's like those little moments that aren't gonna like change the shape of your life it's like no one's killing someone no one's like it's not you know um groundbreaking you know dire conflict it's 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 the little stuff that moves and weaves in and out of life and, and that's where the funny is in our show and, and and so perhaps that was a rambling answer but that's 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 what we were trying to execute no, I, I love it. And even just in terms of, of, of the little pieces and the smaller moments, in terms of Jackson's dynamic with, with his dad and his relationship to coming back home, it also feels like there has to be a certain moment in the show where he makes the proactive choice of I'm choosing to stay now. And I'm, you know, even by the end, he's fighting to stay. But at the beginning, it's that very reticent. I'm here for 24 hours. I'm here just to kind of like do a favor. I'm in and I'm out. And so as you were kind of arcing out him as a character, both in terms of writing him and then carrying it through into your performance, how did you find those, those little moments of his guardrails coming down a little bit further and that real shift from the beginning where it's, I don't want to be here to the end where it's, I'm fighting to stay here for myself and everyone around me. Well, yeah, that's, I mean, it's, <clears throat> that's woven into the DNA of the script and the show is like, you know, as soon we, we always knew that as soon as Jackson was, was back in close proximity to his dad, to Ellis, he would see the the severity of Ellis's headspace and how you know much he was hurting, and he would have to you know face that familial duty or pull to be there for someone when they need you. And we wanted to <clears throat> create that moment, that sort of decisive moment, that fork in the road of like, do I look out for myself and my mental health here and, and escape this? sinking ship or do I you know hop on and try to salvage what I can and I think that's that moment is what creates an interesting you know series line through line and, and theme and and so um I knew I was always going to be playing that and I, I was always going to be leading into that and um Rob makes it very easy because he drives me insane uh in, in real life so all that all those conflicting emotions Jackson is going through I am going through already I mean you you also bring up a great point as well that it is it is a father and a son also navigating through a sense of grief and loss and so for Jackson how did you find what you felt his expression of that would be because again the moment that he's pulled home and he's there more as a support system for his dad that kind of diminishes the space that he has to express it as much you know along with the other sides of him that he feels are sometimes cornered into a bubble a little bit yeah well we wanted to <clears throat> that comes from source material from real life you know there's many been many times where I've had to parent my dad and I think there's something very funny about a child parenting their um their parent so Jackson you know lost his mom but he finds himself uh his presence is there to soothe and or you know reground his father's which you know ideally would be the other way around but that's what's funny about the show you know that's 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 what we and it's and it's real there's many many adult children out there that are currently parenting their parents so i, I hope that they can relate 
And in, in terms of the way that, that Jackson's kind of finding his, his sense of space and identity, what I think is so great is that as he does that, it feels like he finds new ways to really do things on his own terms. So if we take the, the moment where the, everyone's out at karaoke night and his initial reticence is, I don't like karaoke. I don't like large groups. This is your world. This isn't mine. But his way of stepping into that space is, okay, I'll step into there. I'll go up on stage and I'll perform, but I'm going to play, you know, men at work down under on the flute. And that's my way way of having my sense of self and so what to you were a lot of the important beats like that of him kind of finding new spaces to do things in his own way as he absorbs a little bit into his dad's world but keeping the kind of like guardrails up that he needs to yeah I think you know <clears throat> the flu performance is sort of the first moment you see Jackson plant his uh, flag and say like okay maybe I'll, I'll I'll stick around, you know, both spiritually and literally, but I'm going to do it my way. And, uh, you know, his decision to re-enter the lab and, and pursue, <clears throat> you know, various love interests and uh, even, you know, his willingness to acquiesce as quickly as he does. It's, you know, it's not on his dad's terms, although his dad is struggling to make it about him the whole time. So I think it's a constant push-pull. There's not a lot of like specific moments, but I think that, you know, whether it's episode five where we're all in the bar and <clears throat> uh, Jackson has to sort of, you know, make a statement. How would I phrase this? Jackson has to make a stand for his interest in Ruby. Like he does that without his dad's help. And um, it goes temporarily awry and, and he's left to deal with that on his own. And I think those like learning moments are, we're getting to watch Jackson grow and understand in real time. And that's, that's important for his character. And with the fact that, like you just said, we're, we're getting to watch him really kind of grow and figure out certain things in real time. You know, it's, it's very open about certain things that are vulnerabilities or anxieties for him as a character. Did you have a sense quite early on of what you felt like those would be for him as a character in that setting? Yes. I mean, his character was <clears throat> built around, you know, reflecting myself and many kids in, in, in my position that have social anxiety and are thrust into these highly social lifestyles. And so we all, that was what was it, one of the most interesting pieces of Jackson to me was like, how do I, you know, people probably assume that <clears throat> when you're, you spent your youth and just constantly around people and around attention and things like that, that you love it or that you lean into it, but that's not the case. And so, you know, Jackson is, is a character after my own heart who, you know, probably bites his fingernails and, and, and plans out what he's going to say before he shakes someone's hand and doesn't like his food touching. And, and within that, that beat as well, even comes down to a lot of the physicality in your performance. And, you know, at the beginning, it feels like there's a lot of very tight body language. And then as he allows himself to open up, his body language opens up a little bit more. So in terms of, of your performance, how did you find those aspects of the physicality, the mannerisms and the body language? Yeah, honestly, <clears throat> it was intentional. Um, we got to shoot it sequentially, which was nice because I... I accessed those nerves of, of jumping into a project on this scale. And, and, and I worked with a, <clears throat> a coach and, and with the direct, our, our lovely director, Mark Buckland before. Um, and we all sort of were like, you know, use these nerves and just Jackson is a naturally nervous boy, boy, man. So a lot of that is just, you know, channeling real bodily, physical, you know, energy. And uh, as the, series progressed you know I loosened up and so did the character naturally I also love that there's kind of a, a slight kinship in terms of his relationship dynamic with Anna played by Sean Clifford because Anna is also someone who kind of doesn't immediately pull people in to to hug them it's is a different type of expression for her and so it feels like kind of quietly the two of them are very drawn to each other and she's also known him since he was a kid so there's that history between them as well and so how did you you know shape what you wanted that relationship dynamic to look like with the two of them honestly we we had it in the script that the, the, they were you know a yin yang to each other because they're the two that spend the most time around Ellis and and, and understand him the best but when we, when Sean and I first got on screen together that, you know, the first scene we shot was our first scene together in, in her office. And we had such chemistry and we both loved each other so much that 
<clears throat> we as, as writers adjusted and made it you know even more profound relationship on screen and and we just kind of followed it because they're she's so good and I just honestly follow in her wake because she is so talented I love that and you you were touching a little bit as well upon the the relationships in the lab with Ruby and Luna and what's great is that it never kind of exists in a place of creating this love triangle. It's never two women fighting over the guy. It's just, there's a different type of connection that he has with Ruby that just clearly just doesn't quite fit for both of them in that particular time to the the kind of chemistry that starts gradually really building with yeah. Luna. And so how did you make sure that the dynamic that he has with each of them was going to feel very fleshed out, you know, with a lot of chemistry with each of them, but in very different ways? Well, we, well, there's such interesting characters and they're such interesting people and actors, you know, Emma and, and Rachel, <clears throat> the two that play Ruby and Luna, and they're so good that we wanted to give them the, you know, the, the, the proper space to, to let their characters develop. And, and you can swallow that sometimes by making it all about being a love interest. And so, that, you know, we tried to, to fit that in as organically as possible, but also make that not the thing their characters were centered around. You know, when, when we hear about people watching the show and, and the reception so far is like how quirky and how funny and how lovely their friendship is. And that's really what we wanted. We didn't, the, the Jackson's relationship to them is just an accessory to them as characters, but they are the, you know, they have agency and they're their own. They're great. There's their dynamic is probably one of, if not my favorite dynamic on the show. And, and, um, Jackson just, you know, manages to, to orbit them in a fun way. But yeah, that was, it was important to us to not make that the central feature of their characters. You know, and, and with Ellis as a character as well, I've heard you talk a little bit about how in, in working on the scripts that it was important to kind of create this, this dynamic amongst characters and particularly in ensemble scenes where the, the focus and the energy constantly just shifts to that person and kind of how different characters respond to it, where, you know, it's kind of, you can either try to meet them on that level or you kind of like pull back a little yeah. bit. And for a lot of these characters, it feels like their response is to pull back a little bit and just kind of observe it. And so how did that play into aspects that you felt were really important to draw into the script and then carry through, even just when you look at the blocking in terms of scenes that you can really see that dynamic at play in a lot of different ways. Well, when you have a nice sort of, when you have a, dichotomy of power between the type of acting and energy energetic acting with someone like rob and then somebody like me or or like you know sean clifford or someone like rachel and i, I don't think rachel would be offended in, in comparing her and i's characters to each other because we're sort of the like more grounded quieter ones and then they're you know anna and ellis are these you know in your face abrasive uh entities and so um and you have to learn it's a it's a proper game of of ping pong back and forth of like let me let this person have their moment in their space and you wait for your sort of like the, the quiet and the storm to then enter their 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 atmosphere and, and challenge them or just let them do what they're doing i always say that rob is an energy vortex on screen which is a good thing and <clears throat> if you try and fight him you'll lose but if you just let him be and do your thing around him then you complement each other and you've also written this character that, you know, is is reflective of you in different ways. And one of the aspects that I really loved that is when we when we look at Jackson, he's tried to have these different careers and these different paths. And he has other things that he really enjoys that are passions. But you see him light up so much in that moment where he kind of comes back to the lab and he's kind of been fighting it and resisting it. And, and for you as well, I know you've you've spoken a lot recently about how you, you know, you you looked at pursuing other careers. There were other interests that you were kind of potentially going down the pathway for, but you just always felt this like really kinetic pull back towards entertainment. And that ended up being the passion that really drew you in. Um, and so we just wanted to ask a little bit about how it felt important to really express that through your character as well. Yeah, I mean, it's a mirror. It's it's meant to be reflective of, of my actual journey, which was that I, tr I really tried to do everything but. And, and I think that creatively, I knew <clears throat> always that I loved the arts and writing and, and, and even acting, but I just thought, you know, I don't want to have to walk that treacherous path of like being my dad's son for the rest of my life. And, and it just so happens that this is what I love to do. And, and I'm willing to, to walk that now. And Jackson is doing the same thing with science. I just, we just didn't want to place it in entertainment, but it's the exact same journey, just a different um, sort of field of work.
And and you've got like a lot of experience in terms of writing in the industry and in particular on 911 Lone Star. But this is obviously a very different exercise in terms of fully writing out, fully fleshing, fully creating a show with a team of people. And so what were some of the things that your previous writing experience really prepared you for in this experience? And what were some of the aspects that you really just kind of have to figure out and have to navigate once you're on the ground and once you're in that position? Definitely just the the the, the grind is what, what prepared me for. I mean, Lone Star was <clears throat> such a good job and such a fun show to work on, it, but, but tough as hell. And I had great bosses. Um, shout out to our showrunner Rashad Rizani, who's the best, and that that their creator Tim Minear is a genius too. And and um, I just they were so in- informative and instructive and patient. <clears throat> and I learned how to you know the creativity is the thing you bring in, and then when you're learning that you learn the sort of structure of what it means to be, you know, at first a staff writer and then, you know, the responsibilities that come with becoming a story editor and then how to get up to producer level and, and what it means to help produce and, you know, what a tone meeting is and, and you know, page count and, you know, act breaks and you know, cold opens, teasers, blah, 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 commercial moments, like all of these, like the mecha- the mechanics of it, that's what you learn on the fly. And um, I was fortunate to take a lot of that information with me into the, into unstable. And, and I, I learned a lot on unstable too, but I, but cause comedy is a different beast and um, it's so much more subjective. Uh, and Victor and I really, really teamed up well, you know, mentor mentee style. And uh, I learned a lot from them. I really love that. Well, you've, you've done such, such a phenomenal job with the series. It's really, really great in terms of everything that you've done, creating it, writing it, producing it, and also acting in it. So congratulations. And thank you so much, John. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. It was so lovely.